First item of business on the order paper is a motion from the Assembly Commission to appoint an Assembly Commissioner for Standards. I ask the Clerk to please read the motion. That this Assembly, in accordance with Section 19.1 of the Assembly Members Independent Financial Review and Standards Act, Northern Ireland 2011, appoints Dr Melissa McCullough as the Assembly Commissioner for Standards. Thank you. I call Mr Robbie Butler to move the motion on behalf of the Assembly Commission. I beg to move. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to 30 minutes for this debate. The proposer will have up to 10 minutes to propose the motion and up to 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. I call Mr Robbie Butler to open the debate on the motion. Mr Butler. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The Assembly Members Independent Financial Review and Standards Act, Northern Ireland 2011, provides for the role of Commissioner for Standards. It also provides for the Commissioner's independence and powers, which include the same powers as the Assembly to call for witnesses and documents. The primary role of the Commissioner is to carry out investigations into complaints that a breach of the Assembly's Code of Conduct has occurred and to report the outcome of those investigations to this Assembly. Therefore, the role of Commissioner is important in ensuring that MLAs uphold high standards of conduct in public life. The 2011 Act that provides for the office of the Commissioner requires that the person to be appointed as Commissioner for Standards has been identified by a fair and open competition. The Assembly has delegated this function to the Assembly Commission, along with the responsibility for making arrangements, for determining any criteria for appointment, and for determining the terms and conditions in which such an appointment is made. Mr Deputy Speaker, members will recall that the tenure of the last Commissioner, Douglas Bain, ended in September 2017, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr Bain for his committed and professional service in what was, at times, a challenging role. And while the Assembly Commission had undertaken a fair and open recruitment exercise in advance of Mr Bain's tenure ending, it was not possible for an appointment to be made at that time, as the Assembly was not sitting, in order to pass a resolution by the required, uh, by, required by the 2011 Act. The recruitment panel comprised of two members of that assembly, a uh, commission at that time, Alex Maskey and Stuart Dixon, the clerk, chief executive, Leslie Hogg, and the former commissioner for standards for what was then the Welsh Assembly, Gerard Elias. I would like to place on record my thanks to all of the panel members, uh, but I especially want to thank Mr Elias for his insight and expertise, which was of tremendous assistance to the panel. As the Committee on Standards and Privileges was not in place, the approach that was adopted for the previous recruitment competition, whereby the chairperson of that committee sat on the recruitment panel, could not be replicated. So the Speaker, in his role as Chair of the Assembly Commission, has, however, kept the chairperson of the Committee on Standards and Privileges updated on this matter. And while there have been some delays between the date of the recruitment competition and the date of today's motion, the Assembly Commission is satisfied that drawing from the merit list for this recruitment competition remains valid. The Assembly Commission is therefore delighted to nominate Dr Melissa McCulloch as Standards Commissioner uh, for Standards for a period of five years as set out in the 2011 Act. Given the importance and significance of this role, it is important that we appoint a person who has the experience and expertise to undertake the duties with skill, wisdom and judgment. Dr McCulloch has worked as an academic in law, ethics and professionalism in the UK and Ireland since 2005 and has served as a ministerially appointed non-executive director for the Health and Social Care Board in Northern Ireland from 2009 until 2020, and also as a member of the Governance, Reference and Remuneration subcommittees. She is currently a visiting academic at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, an assessor and chair for undergraduate medical programmes for the Medical Council of Ireland, and she also acts as a law and ethics specialist on the Clinical Governance Board at Synergix Health in London. Dr McCulloch's published work and research interests include professionalism, organisational ethics, applied ethics, equality and justice in policy and practice, diversity and inclusion and public health ethics. I am certain that Dr McCulloch's background and wealth of experience will enable her to carry out the important functions of the Commissioner for Standards in a robust and effective manner. And the Assembly Commission recognises the importance of filling this key position and I commend the appointment of Melissa McCulloch as the Commissioner for Standards to this House. Thank you. I call Ms Sinead Ennis, the Chair of the Standards and Privileges Committee. Ms Ennis. 
Gurmagat, last can call you. Um, yes, I rise to speak as chairperson on the Committee uh, for Standards and Privileges. Um, and while the motion before us has been tabled by the Assembly Commission, I should point out that the Committee has maintained a close watching brief on this issue, given the, the hiatus since the previous post holder's five year term of office ended in September 2017. And whilst aware that it was not possible to appoint a replacement commissioner for standards prior to resumption of the assembly business in January last, the committee has been mindful of the crucial role of the commissioner in providing the external and independent element of the assembly's ethical standards framework. The process for investigating complaints is designed so that allegations of breaches of the assembly code of conduct go directly to the commissioner for assessment of admissibility and were applicable for investigation. The committee then considers the Commissioner's investigation reports and determines whether or not a breach of the Code has occurred and, where appropriate, recommends to the Assembly a sanction to be imposed. Therefore, the Commissioner, the Committee and the Assembly exercise the complementary functions of investigation, adjudication and sanctioning, respectively. Each has a key part to play in terms of ensuring that proper standards of conduct are upheld by members of this Assembly. Clearly, the absence of the independent commissioner hinders the work of the committee and the wider assembly in implementing and enforcing the ethical standards regime. That is why the committee has taken a keen interest in the appointment of a new commissioner. Since the return of a fully functioning assembly earlier, earlier this year, the committee received a number of updates from the commission. Members noted that, that the commission had agreed on the need to appoint a commissioner as a matter of urgency and, and had examined the options for proceeding in a timely and pragmatic manner. I expect that the other members of the committee, like me, will be pleased to see this appointment being made today, and I look forward to engaging with Dr. Melissa McCullough in progressing the vital work of implementing the Assembly's ethical standards system. On behalf of the committee, I therefore support the motion. Gormagid. Thank you. I call Mr. Patsy McGlone. Colonel Mugget, uh, for your last count, Corlea. Thanks very much indeed, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I'm glad to stand here today and in actual fact, um, and indeed I would like to thank you for your support through this, this past number of months, um, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, in circumstances where I unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, but in, in standing here today, um, I'm delighted that eventually we've got there after such an extensive period of time, but also very importantly so that such a highly qualified uh, person in Dr. Melissa McCullough with experience in law, extensive experience in different walks of life in the public sector, uh, including her, her works in law and ethics and indeed published works as well, um, that um, she would be the appropriate person to uh, uh, take up the role as Commissioner for Standards. Um, it, it's good to be there because it's an integral part of the work that we all as MLAs do, and I'm glad the Chair of the Committee has outlined the role of the Committee in working with the Commissioner and indeed uh, overseeing the work that would be produced and presented to the committee in regard to the openness, transparency and ethics that are expected of us all as public representatives. So, um, delighted to see us eventually there and look forward to uh, working with the Commissioner in her work uh, and the way forward for this, this Assembly. Thank you very much indeed. Mr John O'Dowd. Uh, thank you, Preve Laskin I am just raised to welcome the appointment of Dr. McCullough. Uh, it's another leg on, on the, the many legs we have on the stool, which keeps this uh, place balanced uh, and the precarious balance that is required for us all to function. Uh, I, I hope I never have to come under the attention of Dr. McCullough, but I do wish her well in her work. Thank you, uh, members. No other member has indicated me, to me that they wish to speak in this debate. So the question is that the Mr. Blair, sorry, Mr. Blair. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, thank you. I had the role of uh, winding o o on this debate, and we'll, can, we'll proceed to do that and respond to the, the small number of uh, responses that we had there. Before I do so, can I just uh, add my comment to some that were made earlier in welcoming back my colleague, Stuart Dixon, to this chamber. Um, very glad to see him here. Of course, you, Principal Deputy Speaker, will understand that some of us saw more of him. Um, that he might have wished in the, in the past number of months, and we thanked him for his contributions then, and, and, and we're glad to have him back here. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, I want to thank members for, for their contributions. While neither myself uh, nor my Assembly Commission colleague, Mr Butler, who moved the motion, uh, were on the original recruitment panel, as members of the Commission, we are assured that an effective, rigorous and fair recruitment competition was undertaken. 
I would like to repeat Mr Butler's thanks to uh, Mr Gerard Elias for his assistance um, that was provided to the recruitment panel. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, the role of Commissioner of Standards is crucial to how we are perceived as MLAs. Having a credible and experienced person undertake this role is hugely important. In this regard, I would again pay tribute to the former Commissioner, Mr Douglas Bain, for his work as Commissioner that covered the investigation of a number of high-profile and contentious complaints. I will now turn to the, the number of uh, comments that were made by members. And she had any spoke as I appreciate the member giving way, and it's only one, just to put on the record, and something that maybe the Committee for Standards and Privileges wants to, to look at in due course now that there's a new Commissioner who's been appointed. The Speaker is responsible for the conduct of members in this place, in this uh, chamber, not for the proceedings of committee meetings. That comes under the purview of the Commissioner for Standards. And in the past, I know that uh, the Commissioner has been brought into how members have interrogated witnesses and so on, and I've always felt that there is a conflict there um, because privilege extends to committee proceedings, um, but yet the Commissioner has a role in looking at how members interrogate witnesses, and sometimes witnesses don't always appreciate the way in which members engage in that interrogation process. Speaking from experience, a complaint was made against me uh, in chairing a, a meeting of the Justice Committee. Douglas Bain uh, dismissed that. Um, but nevertheless, it didn't stop media from having headlines around complaints being made to the Commissioner. Um, uh, and I just think it's something that maybe the Committee uh, can look at in uh, conversation with the new Commissioner, how exactly that would be managed, because I think members would find it beneficial if there was some kind of protocol for how committee meetings are going to be conducted and how the Commissioner would engage in that process. I, I refuse to believe that any person could find anything to complain about in the member for Lagan Valley. Mr John Blair. I'm delighted, Principal Deputy Speaker, that you were able to make that response before I had the opportunity to. Um, the, the, uh, the comments made by the, by, by the member during the intervention will, I am sure, be picked up uh, by the Chair of the Standards of uh, and Privileges Committee who, who is here. And in that regard, can I just thank her for her uh, support for the motion brought forward. Thank also, um, I don't think we need to go into much detail, Patsy McGlone for his support also when he spoke of the openness and transparency expected of members in their work, I would imagine, both here and outside this place, and also to uh, John O'Dowd, who spoke in support also on behalf of the Commission. I thank members for that support. Uh, I trust, Principal Deputy Speaker, that, that Melissa McCulloch will be a highly successful Commissioner. In fact, Principal Deputy Speaker, I very much hope that she will have nothing to do at all during her term of office once, of course, outstanding matters are progressed. However, I would say to all members, and it has been mentioned already, that adherence to the Code of Conduct for members is entirely within our own hands. So it falls to us to ensure that Dr McCulloch does not have too much to do. I hope that members from across the House will support the motion, and I commend the appointment of Dr Melissa McCulloch as Commissioner for Standards to the House. Thank the, the member. Uh, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, if any, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The next item on the order paper is a motion on custodial sentences for attacks against emergency workers 